Inflammation is a process the body uses to eliminate things that need to be eliminated, especially pathogens that enter the body. However, in obesity, the inflammatory response is compromised and shifted towards more of a pro-inflammatory state, a chronic low-grade inflammatory state, which is responsible, we believe is responsible, for a lot of the comorbidities we see with obesity. So a typical immune response before we learn about uh, the chronic low-grade inflammation and obesity, I just want to contrast that with a typical immune response. So typically there's some sort of cellular injury or some sort of factor that promotes an immune response and then capillaries will dilate, white blood cells will infiltrate the area and there's some sort of coordinated response depending on what's going on to eliminate that substance. And usually after that inflammatory response occurs, and this kind of just goes over some of that process, um, and that inflammatory response involves a lot of different immune cells like macrophages, like neutrophils, and potentially uh, T cells and B cells, depending on the type of immune response that's going on. Typically after that injury or that pathogen has been dealt with, the all those pro-inflammatory factors that were higher go back to more of a homeostatic um, state. So for instance, at the end of an inflammatory response, white blood cells will uh, undergo apoptosis. They are then phagocytosed by macrophages in the area. Macrophages are also going to release anti-inflammatory factors as well. And basically all that leads to an amelioration of that inflammatory state, okay? So acute inflammation, we deal with whatever's going on, and then there's some sort of resolution. However, as you're probably guessing, that's not the case in obesity, okay? Uh, that's what should happen, <laughs> should only be triggered when there's some sort of pathogen or cellular injury or some something that the body needs to get rid of. However, in obesity, we see an upregulation and persistence of the inflammatory response, which I keep saying is partly responsible for the comorbidities that we see with obesity. Okay, so this has been established for a long time. We know that in obesity, there's higher levels of C-reactive protein, uh, the plasminogen activator inhibitor one, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleutin six, etc. We see a lot of these pro-inflammatory markers being higher in individuals with obesity. Okay, uh, a good thing about this though is that if um, uh, ob adiposity is reduced, if people lose fat mass, they often see an improvement in those pro inflammatory um, markers and a decrease in inflammation as well. Okay. So, like I said, this has been known for some time. Earlier observations in the 90s were pretty basic and we're just like, hey, there's a lot of immune cells that are in. What in white adipose tissue in individuals with uh, higher levels of adiposity, there's more of it, okay? And like it says here, there was a correlation between the amount of macrophages in particular that are present in obese WAT than compared to individuals or mice or whatever our subjects were uh, that were leaner, okay? So one hypothesis that kind of dominated at the time is that uh, the body senses that our fat cells are too large and that these sick fat cells and large in fat cells need extra help okay and that's why maybe the immune system is being recruited okay so just some other data to support the increase in infl inflammatory markers that are seen in obesity um, and these are studies even from the 90s we found that compared to lean individuals we have higher amounts of like I said tumor necrosis factor alpha and if we look at this slide here, we actually see that although it's higher, uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha is higher in individuals with obesity, that um, uh, expression of tumor necrosis factor alpha can actually go down after weight reduction. Okay, And we also see a decrease in mRNA in a number of uh, different subjects, um, tumor necrosis factor mRNA following weight reduction. And 
Maybe that's correlated, but it's probably a combination of factor, and that might be associated with an improvement in uh, hyperinsulinemia that we often see in individuals uh, that are larger, that have larger bodies. Okay. Another uh, piece of evidence to support the increase in an inflammatory response in obesity is that we see more macrophages. Macrophages are, are a key part of this, um, this situation. Okay. So if we look at lean mice versus, we just focus on this red box for simplicity. If we look at lean mice versus diet, uh, mice with diet-induced obesity, and then ones that are um, missing that um, leptin gene product, that gene product of leptin. Um, what you need to know here is that these cells have been stained for uh, a macrophage specific antigen. So the darker bits suggest where we have more macrophages. So you'll notice that in diet induced obesity and also with that uh, leptin deficiency, we see higher amounts of macrophages. Okay. So the question then is why are there more macrophages in that area and quite honestly we don't totally know there's a bunch of different hypotheses about this uh, one proposed mechanism is that uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha helps link these um, these these situations so as we know when adipocytes become larger in obesity they secrete more tumor necrosis factor alpha and this might provoke our pre-adipocytes to secrete more of this monocyte chemoattractant protein 1, okay, which attracts <laughs> um, our uh, macrophages to that area. Okay. It might also be that higher levels of leptin that are being secreted are having effects on the vasculature to promote higher infiltration of uh, macrophages to the area. Okay, but overall, what we see is higher amounts of this monocyte uh, chemoattractive uh, chemoattractant protein in um, areas where there's higher adiposity, and uh, accordingly, we see more macrophages as well. And again, those macrophages um, actually we didn't talk about this before, but macrophages can also secrete their um, own chemokines, which then promote more inflammatory factors uh, coming to that area as well. Okay, so. It's, again, we have to keep reminding ourselves that this is not a simplistic system and that nothing in the body occurs in isolation. Okay, so it's not just macrophages, it's not just neutrophils, it's not just um, tumor necrosis factor alpha. There's some sort of coordinated process that is uh, increasing the um, presence of immune cells in the adipose tissue of individuals with obesity, especially higher levels of obesity, typically. And I'll get back to that. Okay. So not only were macrophages seen to be elevated in obese state, but we also see higher amounts of neutrophils as well, another key immune cells. Okay. So this shows levels of MPO and calprotectin, both of which that are expressed more highly in neutrophils. And we see their expression are higher in individuals with more severe obesity compared to controls. Again, showing that there's more immune activity in individuals with obesity. Okay. Something that we've said quite a bit. Okay. So this brings us to an interesting topic, which is this this conversation around metabolically healthy versus metabolically unhealthy obese obesity. Um, they estimate, and it's hard to say, but that about 25% of individuals with obesity, they're, um, they, they're more metabolically healthy. So they have less chance of developing type 2 diabetes, less chance of developing cardiovascular disease or other comorbidities as well. And it might be that these metabolically healthy individuals with obesity, they might have a different kind of immune profile, immune activity profile, compared to those individuals with what we would call metabolically unhealthy obesity. Okay, And what we see with more of this, I'll start with this uh, metabolically unhealthy obesity, what we see is more activity of this um, 
this pro-inflammatory um, oligomer, which is responsible for the secretion of many um, pro-inflammatory cytokines, we see higher activity of that in metabolically unhealthy obesity. And what's interesting is that higher activity of this inflammasome might be provoking a shift in the types of macrophages that are found in adipose tissue, okay? So you'll notice the red here are these M1-like macrophages, whereas in the metabolically healthy obese, okay, ones that are less likely to have the comorbidity, we see more of these M2-like macrophages. And what you need to know is that M1-like macrophages, these have more pro-inflammatory properties. Okay? Whereas the M2-like macrophages are more likely to have a uh, lower inflammatory uh, property. Okay? So inflammation is a big deal. You've probably learned all about it in your cardiovascular-oriented uh, sections of the courses. Um, in 2010, uh, the journal Science said that um, inflammation is one of the insights of the decade. Okay, it has become widely accepted that inflammation is a driving force behind chronic diseases, uh, including diabetes, obesity, and cancer. Okay, there's also links with obesity and Alzheimer's, and that might be part of the link as well. The magazine Time also recognized inflammation as a big deal <laughs> as far as increasing risk of a number of different uh, diseases, like I said, including cardiovascular disease, cancer, and Alzheimer's, and obesity too. Okay, so it's a big deal. So the question keeps being like, how? How is it that obesity is leading to this higher inflammation? We've already talked about some ways. Right, that higher um, secretion of certain adipokines. We've also seen higher secretion of leptin might provoke, provoke more of those pro-inflammatory uh, situations. Okay? It has also been suggested that when adipocytes get really large, they might, uh, their, their increased likelihood to rupture might signal the immune system, because the cell is ruptured, that might signal the immune system to infiltrate the area. Okay. Also, the oxidative stress of overfeeding, especially consuming foods that are higher in pro-inflammatory factors um, and not having enough antioxidants, things that we might see in obesity, more of like the dietary aspect of obesity might again be promoting this pro-inflammatory state, probably in addition to what's going on at the cell. There might be a link with the microbiota as well. We'll talk about the microbiota in obesity later on. And again, uh, there might be more um, uh, of these free radicals, these reactive oxygen species that might be found in obesity, perhaps due to the stress that obesity puts on the body and the, the stress the comorbidities put on the body as well. So like I said, um, this shift in macrophage presence that we see in metabolically healthy obesity compared to metabolically unhealthy obesity is kind of similar to what we see as far as the shift in profile between lean and obesity, especially obesity that's um, associated with type 2 diabetes or type 2 diabetes on its own. Okay, so in metabolically, in metabolically healthy obesity, as well as with leaner individuals, we are more likely to see that M2 macrophage presence and less macrophages as well. Okay, but in obesity, specifically metabolically unhealthy obesity, we're more likely to see those M1 macrophages and more of those which are secreting more pro-inflammatory factors that's contributing to that um, adipose tissue inflammation and the increase in inflammatory factors in the blood, which can then have other effects on the body, including uh, insulin resistance. So again, like I keep saying, we cannot forget about complexity with all of these things. Please do not memorize this slide unless you really are dying to. But the point here is that nothing's happening in isolation. And there is many different adipokines that are being secreted by adipose tissue that can contribute to um, this low-grade inflammation. But it might go beyond, or it does, we believe, go beyond just the the change in adipokine secretion that's promoting this low-grade inflammation. 
But again, one of the key messages is that there's more low-grade inflammation in obesity, and that's linking it to its comorbidities, okay? So to summarize the paper that that slide, that last slide came from, it has become evident that the inflammatory condition that is associated with obesity and overweight plays an important part of the etiology of metabolic syndrome and largely contributes to the related pathological outcomes, something I keep saying, okay? Uh, it seems likely that adip adipocyte dysfunction lies at the bottom of this question. Again, something's going on with our adipocytes get too large, that's promoting this larger uh, state of inflammation, okay? It's homeostatic function, so when they get larger, they're overwhelmed, um, and that's contributing to that pro-inflammatory state. Okay. From then on, several vicious cycles exacerbate the disturbances and lead to an inflammatory response. So it's like higher inflammation leads to more inflammation is what that's suggesting. Okay, Not as much inflammation as we would see in an acute inflammatory response, but more than we would see under normal uh, homeostatic healthy conditions. Okay, In parallel with this, so it's not just what's happening at the adipocytes, but in parallels with this, what we're eating, okay, uh, and especially in, in individuals with obesity, they might consume more of this high fat diet, which we know potentially has an inflammatory, inflama inflammation <laughs> promoting effect on the body, okay, especially when that high fat diet is rich in saturated fatty acids or omega-6 fatty acids as well, which we, we believe might have a pro-inflammatory effect, kind of depends, we're unsure about omega-6s these days, okay. But taking that all together, inflammation is a normal part of the body's response to injuries and to pathogens, etc., Normally, that inflammatory response goes away once the threat is dealt with. However, in obesity, inflammation is activated beyond homeostatic levels, even in the absence of a threat, unless you call the adipocytes being large themselves a threat, okay? And this results in that chronic low-grade inflammation, okay? So we see higher amounts of macrophages and neutrophils in individuals with obesity, but it's not just that. There's a number of immune cells and their activities which are higher within, within individuals with obesity, specifically those that, are, that have that metabolically unhealthy obese phenotype. Okay? So part of what's causing that increase in inflammation is changes in adipokine secretion, okay? but again, it goes beyond that as well. And like I said, this low-grade chronic inflammation that we see in obesity, as I keep saying, we believe is responsible for a lot of the comorbidities, specifically insulin resistance, that's kind of the biggest one, that we see with obesity, okay? So now that we understand all of that, in the next unit, we're going to start linking more specifically obesity and insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. We're going to be talking about cardiovascular disease and obesity. We'll talk about um, cancer and obesity as well. And we'll even look at COVID <laughs> and its relation to obesity too. Okay, so stay tuned for that. See you in the next unit.